Okay, this is just a review of integration. We'll just go over the basics in this video and look at some more complex cases as time goes on. So probably one of the first things you learned about integration in terms of actually evaluating integrals was the power rule. And the power rule basically tells us that if we're integrating x raised to the power of n, some exponent n, then the antiderivative of that will be x raised to the power of n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 plus c since this is an indefinite integral. So the nice thing about integration is when you get this end result, we can then derive that result to get back to the original integrand, and they should be the same. So we'll try a few examples um, using this power rule. Again, hopefully it's pretty familiar, but when you integrate, you increase the power. So um, it's easy to confuse with deriving. The power rule for derivatives says you bring the power down and decrease the power by one. So just be aware of that small difference. That's quite a significant difference. So our first example here, we're asked to integrate 4x squared plus 6x plus 3. You can see how the power rule will nicely apply here. So I can integrate term by term. Integrating 4x squared means the 4 is the constant multiple there for the right. The exponent on x squared will increase to a new power of 3, and we'll divide by that new power of 3. Similarly, for the 6x term, 6 is a constant multiple. It's there for the right. And then we'll be integrating x, which has an exponent of 1. So increasing that power, we get 2, and we'll divide by that new power. And then when you integrate a constant, remember that a constant such as negative 3 is really the same as negative 3x to the power of 0. So we're just going to be increasing that power by 1 and dividing by the new power. We'll tag on our constant of integration, since this is an indefinite integral. And I'll speak a bit more to that brief in a brief minute. And this looks a little funny, so I'm just going to take a brief second and rewrite this as 4x cubed over 3 plus 3x squared minus 3x plus c. And that would be our cleaned up antiderivative or integral in this case. I highly recommend checking your work when you do indefinite integrals like this because simply taking the derivative of each term, we should get back the same terms that we had in the integrand. So if you derived 4x cubed over 3, I'd get 12x squared over 3, which simplifies to 4x squared. If I derived 3x squared, I would get back 6x. And if I derived negative 3x, I would get back negative 3. Note deriving a constant is just 0, so that works too. This next one is asking us to integrate a product which is 2x times the quantity x squared plus 5. And pretty much the only way we can do this using the power rule is to simply distribute first so that it's a sum of terms rather than a product. I'm going to rewrite the integral as um, 2x cubed plus 10x after distributing our 2x term. And just that simple step makes it look like the power rule readily applies. So we'll increase the power by 1, divide by the new power for that first term. Same thing for the second term. Increase the power by 1, divide by the new power, and tag on our constant of integration. So remember, of course, that this 10x term had an exponent of 1. And reducing down a little bit, we really have 1 half x to the fourth added with 5x squared plus that constant of integration. Integrating each piece, sorry, deriving each piece of this, of course, would just be a way to check that we get back to this second line here. So the power rule is pretty friendly. As we saw in this example, sometimes we just do a little bit of cleanup prior to using it. This third example will be that same situation. As it sits, we have a quotient, 6x squared minus 9x divided by 3x, but um, in order to use the power rule, we just need a sum or difference of terms. So if we were to simplify here, because it's a polynomial, in this case a binomial divided by a monomial, I can just break it up to two different fractions, which can then be simplified and then integrated. 
So it looks like our first term would clean up to just 2x. Our second term cleans up to 3. And applying the power rule now, we'll get back, let's see, it'll be 2x squared over 2 minus 3x plus c, or simply x squared minus 3x plus c. So a lot of times the way the problem begins, you might not think the power rule is going to be the calculus tool we use, but with a little bit of algebra, that's really all it takes. So keep that in mind. Um, I've used the word indefinite integral a few times in our discussion already, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about indefinite and definite. So the first three examples that we've already done were indefinite integrals because they resulted in just another function. But a definite integral results in an in a actual value. So in general, if I'm integrating a function, we'll say a function uh, with respect to x, then I could have limits of integration, which I'll just write here as a to b. And a and b are going to be x values, and a will be less than the b value, if we think of that just numerically. So when we integrate a function and then we're asked to evaluate it from a to b, this gets into the fundamental theorem of calculus, but we can represent the integral of a function with capital F of x. That's just our notation for the antiderivative. And then I'm going to draw this evaluation bar and say that that function now needs to be evaluated using our limits of integration. And what this really tells us to do is to take the antiderivative evaluated at the upper limit of integration, the value of b, and then subtract off the antiderivative evaluated at the lower limit of integration, which was just a. So in the end, this will result in just a finite value, right? Evaluating a function at some value b and then subtracting that function evaluated at some value a will just result in a constant. So we'll try one example of this, but just before we do that, Basically what we're saying is when you have a definite integral versus an indefinite integral, visually, let's say we're integrating some function f of x in both cases, the only difference that we're going to observe will be those limits of integration we talked about. So a definite integral will have values, um, limits of integration written on. And in our first three examples, when we did these indefinite integrals, the result was just a new function. And really it's a family of functions because of this constant of integration. Uh, and that's because integrating a constant, sorry, deriving a constant rather to check our work is zero. So there are really an infinite number of antiderivatives that satisfy the indefinite integral because of that constant c. So uh, when we use definite integrals, the result will be as we said a moment ago, the function evaluated at b minus the function evaluated at a, where the function I'm referring to, capital F, is that antiderivative function. So this results in a number, a finite value, and our indefinite integrals result in another function with that constant of integration tagged on. So that's kind of the difference in what we're doing here. All that being said, if you're game, let's try one more example. This time it will be definite, but we still are just gonna use the power rule we talked about earlier. So don't mind my limits of integration here from one to three. Let's just focus on the integrand. So we're really being asked to integrate the quantity four x squared plus five so if I focus on that part, integrating 4x squared would give me 4x to the power of 3 divided by 3. Integrating 5 would give me back 5x. If this were an indefinite integral, I'd tag on my constant of integration c and call it a day. But because it is definite, I will now evaluate this antiderivative function using the limits of integration. So I'll just color code my lower limit one and my upper limit of three. 
So this means I'm going to show plugging in the upper limit of 3 to the entire function. Then we will subtract off plugging in the lower limit of 1 to the entire function. So we'll just show that. I'm just kind of leaving some holes for inserting the values I need. And then we'll plug them in. So this can be a little tedious and probably the biggest word of caution is just to watch your signs. But at least I'll get it set up for us here. <laughs> 